Good morning and welcome to this particular breakfast meeting. My name is Desire Derek Ford Mogumisa. Now, yes, usually it's all about sport for me. Today it is uh, sport in a different form and politics that we're going to be talking just here. Now, I've been learning a few German pronunciations and uh, I will request that you rate me after this particular interview. So yes, um, uh, we have something big happening today and that is something titled Games and Politics which will be happening at the Design Hub later today. Mm -hmm. I want to believe it's everything that I love to do in terms of gaming and all of that but by the end of this one we'll know if it really is that. We do have Kristen now, this is where the rating starts. Um, uh, Kristen Kettlehut. Yes. <laughs> from uh, Gothe Centrum. Yes, exactly. He's the yeah. director. I, uh, 10 out of 10 so far? Um, eight. 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 Eight out of oh. 10. Yeah. Not bad. Well above average for me. And then, of course, we have Edwin John Danze. He's the head of digital marketing here at Next Media Services. But what he's really here for is as a curator for games and politics. Can I call it Games and Politics Uganda? Mm, games and Politics. Games yes. and Politics. Yeah, yeah. So Games and Politics, uh, what's that all about? Well, it's um, about the relevance of uh, yeah, um, computer games mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, in when it concerns um, to uh, have a message. Yeah, um, so computer games are not merely uh, only entertaining uh, entertaining um, media like mm -hmm. for i don't know for the youth or for nerds you can call them mm -hmm. um, it's 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 more yeah? um, we can say started in the in the small scale um, it, it defines rules. Yeah. Um, games define rules, and people come together, compete each other, play together. Um, mm -hmm. There are social interactions at um, all points. Also, computer games um, have a narrative mostly. Um, okay. So, like, yeah, I don't know, like books or like movies. And I think no, no one can. Um, right off the, the importance for society and for politics of okay. books and movies, right? Um, and I think we have, um, it has a big economic impact, so it's a, a big economic part uh, um, about computer games. Yeah. I mean, not only the, the coding or the, um, uh, yeah, to, to create the software, to design the world, so there's a lot of creativity also in that, yeah. but also all the hardware around this that has to be produced and um, to purchase um, everything like this. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge market right. um, as well. Yeah. The gaming market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then the one thing is for sure, Uganda is a very, very political country. Mm -hmm. You will know that political content is going to, uh, you know, catch many of our, um, uh, of our people's, you know, attention here and there. And yeah. then we have games and politics as an exhibition what is that all about well um like christian has said uh, gaming is a medium uh, it, it's it stopped being just a, a means of enjoyment or relaxation mm -hmm. uh, you are a game i'm a game almost all, all my friends uh, do game and um, christian talked about movies now most movies are being adapted into gaming for example you have call of duty you have uh, god of war you have grand theft auto there are so many games out there in the world mm -hmm. that have moved from the phase of just being an entertainment um, media to a, mess a, a platform for pushing messaging. Mm -hmm. So games and politics is basically set up to discuss these various things within the sphere of uh, the sport or the enjoyment of video gaming. Mm -hmm. There are political interventions. There is propaganda in gaming itself. Oh, yeah? uh, you're going to have uh, military messaging, uh, mental preconditioning whereby 
almost all the time uh, people are probably going to get to see flashbacks of gunshots or those kind of scenes in games mm -hmm. but at the same time like it's mentioned the economic thing games are extremely the gaming industry is extremely lucrative mm -hmm. um they are multi-billion dollar companies fifa ea sports for example mm -hmm. um grand theft auto still holds the record for the most sold game discs of all time mm -hmm. why is that money being put get eh? mm -hmm. is it going back to the developers is it going to the gamers uh, where is it going? It's funding something in the long run. Mm -hmm. But also remember the political aspects of gender, association, race, tribe, etc. All those things are within the political conversation we are yeah. trying to put across. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, on the bigger scale, as, at least from the sports end, we are hearing about the American women seeking equal pay and stuff like that. They hardly appear on, uh, on, on FIFA. In fact, um, uh, all you do is probably play the World Cup with them and that is it, or some sort of tournament. But yeah, I, I, I do hear what you mean when it comes to the race and all of that. Um, uh, I'm going to come back to you, Christian. Mm -hmm. Is this the first time this is happening world over Uganda? Um, well, yes, in Uganda, yes, mm -hmm. um, but in the world, not. So this exhibition um, uh, circling this um, gaming and politics aspects um, is a um, traveling exhibition. So it okay. actually started in, in uh, or was part of a even bigger exhibition in the um, Center for Art and Media in Karlsruhe in, in Germany uh -huh. um, in 2015 and 16. And I actually took part in that. Oh, sorry, no, I visited that exhibition okay. at that time. <laughs> Not yeah. took part, but uh, I visited it. Uh -huh. um, uh, and uh, that part um, moved then, that's uh, games and politics, from uh, various stops in, in Europe Mm -hmm. um, like Brussels, Belgrade, Madrid, then moved to the Americas uh, from Boston, Los Angeles, uh, Mexico City and also Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. In Asia from Mumbai, Bangkok, um, Novosibirsk. Um, so it has a, a, quite a long journey. And also it has been on the African continent as well. Um, the, um, where it has been before. The last stop was in Addis Abeba. Mm -hmm. Before that in Dar es Salaam um, and in Johannesburg. So mm -hmm. it has quite a long journey. I mean, the, the original exhibition was in 2015, 16. Now it's like six years mm -hmm. traveling now. And I'm really happy to have it here now in, in Kampala to uh, present it to you people here. And we see how we can make it um, uh, also um, about Uganda in this mm. exhibition, not, right. not only, um, yeah, not only uh, like the European view, but a Ugandan view. The Ugandan yeah. view. And uh, it's quite big. I've been seeing social media. Uh, accounts, you know, talking about gaming and stuff like that. At yeah. least now we could have an opportunity to talk about more than I, I beat some guy 5-0 just last Friday. <laughs> so if we can talk more, <laughs> but shouts out Nakamuza. Learn, <laughs> learn, man. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, Danza, do we have some sort of theme to yeah. this particular one? Because, hey, games and politics is one thing, but... Yeah, um, a couple of themes. Uh, since we have two uh, we have an opening day today, and oh. tomorrow is another day that's ah. going to be there. This is running for two months, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, we really want to make sure this information seeps in. Mm -hmm. so the, some of the themes are um, diversity, safety, and gender, especially for today. Mm -hmm. We want to really talk about um, issues to do with diversity, mm -hmm. and it's quite widespread, like uh, the people are seeing on the screen. Mm -hmm. Inclusion in gaming is something important to us. I've done a lot of gaming events and campaigns or tournaments, and I always ask myself, where are the ladies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, almost all the biggest gaming uh, studios in the world have lead uh, uh, women as the game developers on the programming sides and all those things. Mm -hmm. They are amazing character developers as well. In the country, you have animation studios creating characters or environments that have lady programmers in there. Mm -hmm. Same thing that you see with Next Media and Media itself, anchors. We have a fair balance of women versus men mm -hmm. in sport, like you had initially mentioned as well. They ex women's teams exist, but they're not as celebrated. We want to pull the ladies closer to mm -hmm. this gaming thing mm -hmm. because it's beyond just entertainment, shooting stuff and making noise mm -hmm. and the toxicity anyway. But yeah, that's part of the theme, diversity, safety and inclusion. Safety in terms of since we are online on smartphones and on computers using Wi-Fi networks, there are security risks that could be involved. Others could be what we are trained to do and get what we do after the game has told us a particular message. Mm -hmm. Where are we dealing with the safety there? And of course, diversity is mm -hmm. 
we are multicultural, multiracial, and all those things. Okay. We need to input so many of those aspects. We need to talk about them today at our panel at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. so that people understand what we're pushing. And then on Saturday, we're having a, a fireplace session whereby we bring the sponsors of gaming tournaments, mm -hmm. the people that inject the money into the gaming industry, mm -hmm. the people building these games, the people that are doing the active collaboration, Creatures Animation, Sunjata, the gaming studios, mm -hmm. and so many others out there, so that they have a conversation on the gaming industry in Uganda. So basically a spotlight, yeah. Sounds huge. This one, uh, especially on <laughs> in the inclusion part, I do remember we were at one of those Vumbula trips uh, yeah. down in Fort Porto, and uh, there was a game that was put out, and we were all playing, and then this girl comes out and she says, oh, can I play next? And I was one of those that were thrown aback. That's mm. the first time I actually wondered, oh, there are actually not so many girls coming through, especially for the games like FIFA and yeah, all of those yeah. um, are going on. So it's uh, something that is definitely one that we need to address. Christian, um, what's the why in here? Why are you doing this exhibition, especially this one in Uganda? Why? I think, um, so um, as uh, Danza already mentioned, it's, it's, it has a relevance. It is um, important. And as I, uh, yeah, as I said before, you have a, um, a lot of um, implications that um, defines us also as, as a um, society. Um, when uh, you were talking about this um, um, connections um, via, via Wi-Fi, what does it mean? We are connected to the whole world. So, yeah. um, and this is um, this is how we um, how it defines our perception of the you know this this gaming world. How it affects our um, perception of the real world as well, mm -hmm. and um, also. Um, not only the, the, the gamers or the developers um, uh, should be um, there, but also the characters um, that are created in, in the games, right? Yeah. Uh, so when I, I don't know, if I see the, the characters in, in GTA, for example, um, yeah. you see a lot of um, um, social issues um, happening in, I mean, in that case, it's especially the US society, but you can transform it to any, any other um, country, maybe too. Mm -hmm. um, you see um, poverty, you see um, racism, you see um, uh, yeah, people dealing with their everyday life. I mean, it's still a simulation, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you, you can see some things that you can transfer in, into your real life and it makes you think. Yeah. Uh, as I also mentioned before, the narrative of, of games make you think. And this thinking affects us mm -hmm. um, in how we treat others right. in the end. Yeah. Listening to Christian here, uh, Danze, the people who are parents out here, and I am one, Danze is another, um, have been warned about the cartoons that we let our children watch yeah. <laughs> because there is messages going on in there. Yeah. From what Christian is saying, Danze, it looks like gaming also has something um, at, at the within it yeah. that we might not be paying attention to. It looks like as parents, all we want to know is what are they doing all day in the house they are playing <laughs> yeah. games so that's safe yeah um this is uh, very true um yesterday i was talking to a team uh doing our retweet and i showed them in the data that is being shared right now on internet use in the world gaming has a portion specifically for uganda the percentage was quite small but the fact that it's globally being recognized as something that people are doing actively at their free time mm -hmm. people are playing candy crush people are playing uh, matter to people are playing all sorts of games mm -hmm. on their phones meaning if you're taking them off social media they're potentially playing a video game yes. or they are chatting mm -hmm. but regardless of what they're chatting about it may be about games movies football uh on all, all sorts of other things out there mm -hmm. now parents or this scenario that you've just presented now let me try and broaden it for example is Ukraine versus Russia right now. I don't even know why I'm saying versus, but Ukraine and the Russia situation that's happening in, the, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Video games have been taken advantage of. Uh, drone footage, uh, aerial attacks, um, fake news and uh, fabricated information is being taken from video games, presented to the rest of the world mm -hmm. as reality of what's mm -hmm. happening in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yet, both parties are doing it. Mm -hmm. But what does that show you? The medium has become so sophisticated to the point of realism so it's easier for you to consume this information and take it as is mm -hmm. now dangers of course are presented to um, children and, and the parents themselves because like is mentioned gta uh, which was a very contentious game in, in the u.s senate they even 
hard hearings, games like motor combat with extreme violence and blood and I all those things. I can stand it. Uh, you get Personally, it? I, I yeah. can stand it. You've reached scenarios whereby you cannot remove the blood and go. Yes. So what does that mean? Is we are going to be preconditioned to accept seeing death, violence and all these things. Now that's the negative side of gaming. Mm. But at the same time, if you're playing a game like Call of Duty as a child, FIFA, a racing game, uh, Gran Turismo, uh, Need for Speed, etc., it helps with reflexes. Yeah. Get it? Eh? Eye-to-hand eye coordination. It has helped uh, paralyzed um, uh, patients to get their motor functions back. Mm -hmm. uh, people have learned to speak better or express themselves easier because they're in virtual rooms online where they're talking to other people. Mm -hmm. People have love. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so, um, you have uh, people like Ninja who are being sponsored by Red Bull and, um, and uh, all these amazing games out there. They're earning a lot of money from the gaming bit. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, I can't express stresses enough that gaming is a huge economic I think mm -hmm. it's earning creatives a lot of money and they're really competitive people like with the tournaments I've done, people have managed to get out of poverty because of gaming. Mm -hmm. So the pros begin to outweigh the cons, but we could never ignore either of them. Yeah. That's right. Um, uh, only, I don't know if that's also economic for me, but I will say that um, uh, gaming, especially FIFA's career mode, mm -hmm. has helped me so much as far as my job in terms of analysis and mm -hmm. uh, transfers and um, emotions of players and trying to explain situations in one way or the other, tactics and that kind of stuff. It has helped me a lot along with the uh, podcast. So, yeah, if you're out there and you're wondering what can I do to be a better sports person, I think gaming is one of those things because yeah. they've made it so real. Mm -hmm. The player is just not playing well because he He's, the realism that Danza was pointing out because he's angry because you didn't offer him a contract or he just can't play with that kind of player and stuff like that. It is so real. But um, who is your target audience when you bring this to Uganda today? Am I looking for 18-year-olds or 25-year-olds or boys or girls? Is there a target audience to this event? Um, so in general, everybody is invited yes, mm -hmm. to, to join. Um, the target audience, um, yes, we want to um, address um, gamers here in Uganda since we are um, yeah, uh, also talking about the econo uh, yeah. econo sorry, economic factors um, mm -hmm. on that, mm -hmm. um, how you can um, bring in your um, creative potential in that, um, how you can, uh, I don't know, reach out to, to um, the, the um, big uh, companies. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, people who like games as, as art mm -hmm. because um, we haven't spoke uh, speak about um, uh, this uh, gaming world as also an expression of, of art so some yeah. of our games especially have you know they have those political messages but um, are um, created like um, paintings yeah. Yeah. so um, who else is our um, target audience um, I think the parents the parents oh, yes. a big 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 uh, target audience mm -hmm. because they must understand uh, I grew up in a very strict kind of family but I, they used to always notice I'm gaming all the time. Mm. I managed to get my own consoles mm. later on in life. But all the time, parents need to understand that it's a good way to keep the children off the drugs. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they may be exposed to the drugs in the games. So we need to understand the balance. Mm. The policy makers is extremely important. That's why we have people like Cass on board. Mm -hmm. uh, the creative is extremely important. The exhibition will showcase a lot of expressive art and all those things beyond that. Some of the games we have, talk about uh, yeah, human rights, uh, acceptance, transitioning into adulthood and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the target audience could be doctors, teachers, the media as ourselves, mm -hmm. and most importantly, anyone that has questions about real life issues. All right. So we have a set, a set of all those kind of games. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, for you as a gamer, because we've talked about all these people yeah. that could be target audiences for this, for you as a gamer, what would an event like this mean? Um, as a gamer, uh, one, I must say, I'm a console gamer mainly, uh, I PlayStation 5 and all those things, mm -hmm. but um, I've sampled the rest of the other games, board games, um, actually games are actually board games as well, or more so everything, yeah. <laughs> everything. So even as a football manager, you're counting us? A everyone is welcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what it means to me is there's going to be an opportunity to the people that are commercially doing gaming to understand how to get to the next level. We've invited some amazing people that will talk to people on Saturday, mm -hmm. people that have been injecting money in the industry. So mm -hmm. Like um, Christina said, they are going to learn to collaborate. We are going to learn to collaborate as gamers. Mm -hmm. We are going to understand how to best 
position ourselves within the economy of Uganda, because mm -hmm. most of them have small gaming parlors, yes. charging small amounts of money. Mm -hmm. We want to teach them how business can be led so that they understand, because they're going to see the examples of people who are doing game development here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. What struggles have they gone through? What are their success stories? Mm. And then most importantly, it's great to network with other forms of gamers out there. It's good to have them in one place because the more we do that, mm -hmm. the easier it is for us to understand the way forward. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, very interesting event. I'm starting to reorganize my Saturday <laughs> as well. But um, uh, for the launch today, what can we expect? Um, a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, yes, we have a very um, spotty full program um, today. So, um, as Danzo already mentioned, we have um, those um, um, panel discussions mm -hmm. um, going on today and also tomorrow. Today, under this um, theme of um, diversity, safety, and uh, inclusion. inclusion. Yeah. Um, so I have to take my paper for that. I don't want to, for, <laughs> I don't want to forget any, uh, anybody. Yes, yeah. um, That's okay. yes so for, uh, for the panel discussion, um, we have uh, Anna Reismann from the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung here in uh, Uganda and they are also for um, uh, South Sudan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ivan Kibuka uh, from Navi Gaming. Um, Jackie Kimi, uh, Kimi, Gisa. Kimi Gisa, yes, yeah. uh, from Citizen Report, mm -hmm. and the journalist Raymond um, Muyuni. Mm -hmm. um, I think that will be a very interesting uh, um, uh, conversation also with the audience then. Mm -hmm. um, but since we are not only there for, for talking, yeah. um, mm -hmm. we, have, uh, uh, we are very happy to have a, a, a very special performance for today, yeah. just um, created for, um, for this event um, right. around those games by um, uh, Daphne Tumba Base. Um, oh, that's uh, Twinimo Juni Ivan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, he's that. doing great, he's doing great. <laughs> um, and uh, Sibolime Elisha Davis. So yeah. um, I saw the um, uh, rehearsals yesterday and was wow. Yeah. Mm. So, um, you can really looking forward to that. And um, this will be followed with a, um, by a pep talk by mm. uh, Mildred, Tuba, Mildred Tubaise. She's actually a colleague of yours. Yeah. Yes. The yes. MBS, yeah. right? Yes. Mm. And uh, very um, enthusiastic in, in, uh, in the digital um, uh, sphere. Yeah. And um, we have a very nice music program in the end by um, uh, Isaiah and uh, Hibotep. So that will be also... Mm time to move uh, your hips. All right, it's <laughs> yeah. uh, a and, full on event. And yeah. also all the games are, it's an interactive exhibition. Um, mm. we, have, uh, we have to mention that a lot of times. Uh, yeah. So it's an interactive um, exhibition, so you can play all the games there. We also, for those who seek yeah, more action, we have um, like a, a 3D um, virtual reality corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I tried that also yesterday. <laughs> um, uh, you have to have a strong stomach for that. So yeah, you have to experience it, it yourself. It's really yeah. real, yeah. 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 Um, Dance the Saturday? Uh, Saturday is going to be uh, Raymond Malinga from Creatures Animation. They did a Kawala Banda at my homework. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to spoil the rest of what he'll talk about. You have Grace Namutebe from Mountain Dew. She's really been pushing gaming in the country. Mm -hmm. Invest a lot of money and product in the gaming. We have uh, Philip Mukasa from Sunjata. They are game developers. So it will be first hand information from them. We have so many other people that are going to be on that particular panel. We have Kea. We have uh, Lorian have been doing uh, stuff with event uh, tribe uganda mm -hmm. so we have the right concoction of people that have been uh, pushing the gaming industry and the creative industry right. in the country on saturday so that's why you're going to ex expect more of a laid back relaxed but very informative kind of um, fireplace discussion that's happening right. and of course the music the performances the free drinks hey. oh yeah yeah and some beating yeah um, uh, <laughs> all right so if you are just joining us, it is the Games and Politics uh, exhibition. It's happening in Uganda for the first time in Africa. Um, not for the first time, surely. Yeah. But uh, it's happening and it's starting today. And that is at the Design Hub in Kampala. Uh, we'll be there starting 3 p.m., I believe. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, tomorrow, what time does uh, it open tomorrow, Saturday? We're open the entire day, but our discussion will be from 4.30 p.m. All right. Here. Great. Um, uh, how can I attend? How much do I need to part with? And uh, for how many days? Mm. Yes. So it will be there for like two months. Um, so, so, start, yeah. so all two months at Design Hub? Yes, at Design daily. Hub. Um, daily. Um, uh, Sunday not. Mm, <laughs> um, okay. 
Um, and there will be um, other um, events announced, so we are planning on other events surrounding those, those um, games. Uh -huh. um, and um, what was the question, how you can attend? How can just, I attend it? I just come, so it's, it's sure. free, free of charge. Okay. Um, um, Everybody is invited, yeah. Great, so. cool. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, Danza, let's pick your closing remarks on this one. Um, mine is just come, come understand what our passion is as gamers, come experience gaming. Uh, all types of games are going to be there. Mm -hmm. They're easy to learn. Uh, some of them won't be for playing. Some of them will just be for watching. And then we're going to try and raise as many questions as possible. Mm -hmm. It's free entry. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to learn a lot from what gaming is, but most importantly for the gamers and the people that have invested money in gaming, come understand how to go to the next level now. All right. Yeah, otherwise, um, we're just very grateful for our partners, uh, Gote and uh, Cass, for coming on board. Next Nextcom Afromobile uh, will be able to stream uh, the entire event on the Afromobile app for free. Mm -hmm. And also, between three to four, you will have a sneak peek of the exhibition live on NBS still. Mm -hmm. And then, um, basically, just come and have a great time with us Friday and Saturday. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I'm going back to my trial. Kristen Kettlehut. Kettlehood, yes. Yes. Um, uh, your final remarks. Um, yes, so actually what, what Danze said, so come and enjoy and also experience um, this, uh, this exhibition. Um, I also want to mention that uh, the Goethe, Goethe Zentrum Kampala is not um, only a cultural institution, but also a language institution. So if mm -hmm. you are, want to learn German, yeah, please oh, yeah. Uh, come to our offices. We have... Oh, you can follow, find all the information on the, uh, yeah. on the internet. So there are different yeah. price ranges because we are offering different levels, right? Yes. Um, uh, registration is ongoing. The next term starts uh, soon in April. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank um, all of my team um, here um, for this amazing work. Um, so uh, Zina, Ani, uh, Barbara, Julius, also you, Danza. Yeah. Um, thank you for all the work you um, and effort you put into this, making this possible. Yeah. Um, thank you for having you on board. Yeah. And also thank you for the invitation here. It's actually You're my welcome. first time in, the, in television. So ah. um, yeah. We'll do much more. We'll do <sighs> <Maybe>. much more. <laughs> okay. um, how long have you been around Uganda? Sorry? How long have you been around Uganda now? It's one year, some month now. I arrived in 2020. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, sure. He's Uganda now. <laughs> He's as Uganda as it gets. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, uh, thank you so much for making the time to share with us this uh, brilliant um, uh, idea. Yeah. And I hope it's uh, successful for all of you uh, right there. I'll definitely be coming through at least today. And okay. then we can pick it up from there. Perfect. All right. Hopefully you've tuned in. You've learned a thing or two. Games and Politics, the exhibition is down here in Uganda starting today for the next two months at the Design Hub. Kampala, 3 p.m. today. They do set off. So let's start our weekend together um, uh, by learning a few things here and there. Um, uh, interacting with the games here and there. Uh, having a drink, I understand. And uh, what do you call that? Moving a hip yeah. or something like that. Dancing. Yeah, I think that's dancing. So it will also be happening <laughs> at the Design Hub Kampala today here in Kampala. See you there. Good morning.